have changed a lot. I've become so obsessed with my own company. It's almost scary. Like, girl, you need to go out and make some friends. The Southern Belle moving back to New York City thinking that everybody's just gonna welcome me with open arms. No. I just simply do not feel. Hey y'all, it's Thomasina. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, thanks for tuning in. So honestly, I've been doing some reflection over the past couple of days and I realized that since moving to New York City, or I guess moving back to New York City, I have changed a lot. Some for the better, and maybe some for the worse, depending on how you look at it and depending on who you're talking to. The general consensus is that I've definitely changed a lot. I know I have a lot of subscribers who are considering moving to New York City. They are either working on plans to move to New York City or they're in this phase of analysis paralysis where they're just constantly watching hella New York City videos hoping that they'll finally get some kind of courage to finally make the leap and move to New York City. But me, coming from the South and a suburban town, completely different from New York City, I, I've definitely recognized what parts of me have changed and I thought I would share that with you guys. I don't know, it's a, a little bit more transparent than my normal videos, but I always say I want to be open and honest and real with you guys, so that's pretty much what this video is going to be. Moving away from your hometown, moving away from like the friends you've known your entire life, maybe even moving away from family you've been around for your entire life, can be really, really beneficial to your life. It can stimulate growth. It could stimulate creating new friendships and new relationships that will ultimately help you develop into the person that you were meant to be. So if you're scared of change, if you're scared of moving away from your hometown, if you're scared of leaving everything you've ever known behind, I hope that I can encourage you to just go for it because you never know what can happen. So I hope that I can be that source of light, that encouragement, um, that sign that you should definitely do it if you're thinking about doing it. So jumping right into it, the first thing that I've definitely noticed about myself is that I've definitely become a more independent person, which I definitely, I've said definitely like 50 times. Even from doing the research, finding apartments, touring apartments on my own, flying up here by myself with literally no help, all of that made me realize how independent I actually am, that I'm capable of doing these things on my own. Growing up from a large family, I'm one of, I'm the second youngest of 10, um, so I feel like I wasn't necessarily coddled, but I knew that I always had my siblings if I needed them. I always had my parents if I needed them, and so I would quickly call mom, dad, call brother, sister whenever I needed help. I and mean, I think that moving here on my own forced me to not make those phone calls because not everybody is available right when I need them. So there were times where I would want to call my sister, I would want to call my mom or my dad, maybe if I was going to tour an apartment by myself and they weren't available and so I had to go on my own with nobody on the phone to assist me and just kind of figure it out. So I definitely think moving to New York City has made me more independent or has made me more aware of maybe the independence I already had inside because it's forced me to utilize it. On the other side of independence, I feel like moving to New York City has made me much happier being alone. I feel like back in North Carolina, I always had the same group of friends and so if I ever wanted to do something, I would just hit them up like, hey, you wanna go out to eat or you wanna go to the movies or you wanna do this, but I always needed someone to come with me. Um, but since moving to New York City, Y'all, as you know, as I say in most of my videos, I prefer doing things by myself. Like, I've become so obsessed with my own company, spending time by myself, doing things by myself. It's it's almost scary. Like, girl, you need to go out and make some friends. But <laughs> I'm just so happy and comfortable in my own solitude. And I think that that, that screams growth. Once you can be really happy with yourself, it's easier for you to be happier with other people. You're not turning to other people for happiness because you found it within yourself. And so I think moving to New York City has definitely helped me achieve just happiness in my own solitude. Another change that I've noticed within myself since moving to New York City is that I've definitely become less sensitive. Before moving to New York City, um, my family knows that I'm probably one of the one of the most sensitive ones in the family. It used to be easy to hurt my feelings and I used to take a lot of things personally, but since moving to New York City, I feel like there is, you, ha you really have to develop 
thick skin moving here because people will say things to you people will do things to you and it's really not in it's really not necessarily intentional. Some people have mental health issues that they're struggling with, so they don't realize that their words hold a lot of power. Some people are just really busy with their lives and overwhelmed with their own lives, so they may cancel on you last minute over and over and over again, but it's not like an intentional dagger to the heart. People are just dealing with their own baggage they're just dealing with their own stuff and so moving to new york city i quickly realized that because i am this southern belle moving back to new york city thinking that everybody's just gonna welcome me with open arms and want to be best friends and want to hang out all the time no i realized that i can't take things personally because then my feelings are just going to be hurt all the time and I'm going to be sad all the time and I'm going to be depressed and nobody wants to be around that energy and so then I'm going to be even more lonely and it's just going to be this, you know, this snowball effect of just sadness. So um, I've definitely become less sensitive. I honestly don't remember the last time I cried and this is not like me suppressing my emotions. It's just me. I built like a protective barrier, like an armor for my emotions if that makes sense so I'm not like harboring these internal like sad emotions I just simply do not feel or I've changed the dialogue in my head to where I realize that the things that people do reflect more so on them than it does on me so I can't take people's actions personally I would say in a way I've become emotionally numb but I feel like a lot of people would take that negatively but I don't know do with that what you will but I, I would say it's kind of like emotionally numb or like jaded because you do see a lot of things a lot of sad things here in New York City seeing the number of people who were struggling with mental health in the city and the number of people without homes in the city just like sleeping on the street when it's cold and rainy out that is that's really really sad you know people begging you for money every time you get on the train it's sad and it becomes a lot and if you don't build up that emotional barrier it will take a toll on you because you see it every single day so I just learned to you know acknowledge it you know I see it it's happening it exists I'm not ignoring the issues but I am choosing my my own happiness and my own sanity over allowing that sadness to just like hover over me. Is this like the saying you can't pour from an empty cup? You have to take care of yourself and don't let anybody make you feel bad for taking care of yourself because we do live in a very sensitive society where they think that you choosing your mental health over something that's going to stress you out or something that's going to make you depressed is selfish and I'm here to tell you it's okay to be selfish it's your life you need to do what you need to do to maintain your mental health and to maintain your happiness and that is what I've learned how to do since moving to New York City and it's definitely made a world of difference to my happiness I get a lot of comments on my Instagram like oh my god you look so happy Happy, you're glowing every time I go back home my dad who really doesn't pay attention to much but my dad will say like wow you're glowing like what's gotten into you and I'm like the beauty of New York City the beauty of being where I want to be and learning how to be happy existing here that is what has me glowing another thing or another change that I've learned about myself is that I've become more savvy I've become more of a finesser if that makes sense not in like a con man kind of way but I feel like New Yorkers have a way of communicating to either get their point across get something that they want or like get a discount or something maybe but they just know how to finesse and a lot of it can probably be attributed to like the aggressiveness in their tone of voice like you know they're nobody to play with and I think that I've definitely adapted that into like my persona um because if you know me in person I have a very like I, I could be kind of like soft-spoken if that makes sense until you piss me off then it's like a completely different person and so I think being in New York I've learned how to comp combine the two to where people wouldn't try to take advantage of me I've been put in situations where I've needed to negotiate a lower rate or yeah like negotiate a discount or something and y'all when I tell you this was really really hard for me like I come from a family of negotiators and that it must have skipped the generation because I did not inherit that gene so it's always been hard for me to like negotiate so yeah New York will definitely teach you how to like work the system oh this is a good one I would definitely say my confidence 
has went through the roof since moving to New York City. People will be like, oh, she thinks she's all that or she thinks she's all that in a bag of chips. Yes, I do. I would say although, although my value is not at all determined by like other people's opinions, when you leave the house and you are consistently complimented by strangers, that makes you feel good. That fills you up in a way that other things cannot. And since moving to New York City, you guys, I have never been complimented as much as I have here. Like, I never experienced that in, in the South. I never experienced that in North Carolina. I walk out of my apartment every single day and I'm complimented by at least five strangers throughout the day and I could be looking like a complete bum sometimes I'm complimented at the gym where I'm sweaty and just looking crusty you guys know I always tell you when I look crusty like I'm very straight up when I know I look a hot mess but in New York people are people will just compliment you you know fashion is big here in New York City so if they see a nice fit you know they gotta let it be known that you look great today and I just love that about the city and it's definitely made me feel like dang I, I really am the ish and I think that is why New Yorkers have such a high perception of themselves because even when I like I was born here and I spent a couple of my first few years here but when I moved to North Carolina I carried that same New Yorker confidence with me to North Carolina and people could tell there was a difference between the way a New Yorker walks and the way like a southerner walks there's a difference in the swagger there's a difference in the way that we carry ourselves we definitely are just really confident people and I think that that is even though I've always been like confident in myself it's for sure it's for sure rubbed off on me even more since like officially moving back to New York I feel like ultimately I'm just really proud of myself because New York is a very hard city to make it in because it's so many people so much competition it's so expensive it could be lonely you know your mental health can spiral out of control so there are so many factors that make it hard to make it here in New York City and the fact that I'm doing as well as I'm doing you know obviously I'm nowhere near where I want to be and I'm definitely I definitely feel I could be doing better but it's only been two years and I pretty much made this move by myself and have been doing everything on my own independently independently so that makes me feel even more confident like dang like you really you really out here doing it you really out here doing it by yourself that in itself also just makes me feel super powerful like just looking back on all that I've accomplished and looking towards my future like knowing my trajectory knowing that it's only going to get better from here um, it just makes me feel really good about myself and that overall just helps my confidence. I mean, honestly, I can go on and on and on about all the ways that New York has changed me, but I won't bore you guys with all those details. I want to end with this change. I feel like I have developed an intolerance to BS. I've always been able to sniff out BS because I've always been big on like energies and stuff like that but I think now I have just like a zero tolerance policy because I feel like we live in a culture that's like always looking for the next best thing because there are so many people here there's so many things to do so many opportunities you know why would I settle for this thing that's stressing me out and like basically BSing me where there's a better opportunity over here like why would I waste my time here when I could just go here. Granted, this could be seen as a negative thing depending on the context, but generally speaking, there are just so many options. Like they say, there are plenty plenty of fish in the sea. There are so many options, so why like settle for this thing that's not making you happy, this thing that's just not working out, when you can try your hand at something different? Everybody is here grinding, you know? Everybody has their own goals and their own dreams, their own reasons for living in New York City. I don't need to hear the excuses. I don't need to hear the BS. People are gonna do what they want to do ultimately. So if someone's not putting in the effort, if they are giving you excuses, if this thing is constantly not working out, you know it's not for you. It's not for you. Just cut it off. There's no need to keep returning to the same thing over and over and over again expecting different results. Like it's not gonna happen. I feel like New York City has a very like disposable culture like because there's so much of everything here like if something's not working out for you like you just dispose of it you toss it and you move on to the next thing but for me it has 
definitely been a time saver and it has definitely saved my mental health because I'm not spending so much time stressing out about this one little thing because I know another opportunity is going to present itself in my life because that's the kind of energy that I'm attracting. Yeah, I feel like I was just rambling. But there, there's been a lot of growth within just these two years and I try not to get emotional. But I've had a lot of growth within these two years. I'm so proud of myself for making the move and not being afraid to do it, being fearless in my dreams, being fearless in my goals. And that is what I want for all of y'all watching this video. That's what I want for everybody. People ask me if I have any regrets on moving to New York City wholeheartedly i don't two years ago when i was traveling between north carolina and new york for work i told myself like ew new york is disgusting i would never move back here like it's too loud it's too this it's too that and then a few months later i was signing a lease to an apartment in brooklyn <laughs> so it's just funny how life works out but i have no regrets on moving here i'm so thankful for the experiences that i've had this far and i'm so excited for where life is going to take me next there was really no other underlying reason for this video i just wanted to i don't know i was kind of thinking about it and i was like dang that's so interesting and i wanted to share it with you guys because um at least a few of you care about my experience living in new york city i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you took something from it i hope i inspired you to maybe do that one thing you've been thinking about in your life but as always thank you for watching and i will catch you in the next video bye